Good morning and welcome back to Spiritual Ministry Class. We are going to continue talking about the gifts of the Spirit today. I am so excited to continue our class, our session. God has been doing great things. I don't know about you guys, but I felt the touch of the Holy Ghost so strong in our last session. I felt like God was ministering to someone, felt like the Lord was giving that, that bold faith to someone, that gift of faith. It's amazing to me because you can talk about it, but when you feel it, when you experience it, it's completely different. Experiencing the things of God is completely different than just talking about them. Thank God uh, we can talk about them. Thank God we can learn. We can study to show ourselves approved. We can do all those things. But when we experience God, it's a life-changing thing. And I felt that. I felt that life-changing experience happening in our last session when we talked about the gift of faith. It was powerful. I felt that gift moving on me. I felt it on as I teach the class or taught the class. And I'm praying that we can continue that and continue feeling the very presence of God because we need the help of the Holy Ghost. So welcome back to class. We are going to move forward into a gift number eight in the gifts of the Spirit in this session. And we are going to talk about the gifts of healing today. And I really believe that God is going to open up the windows of heaven and pour out his anointing, his blessing, his revelation on us. And we need that as we continue into our study in section six of spiritual ministries the gift of healing. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's ask him to help us, and then we'll get into the word of the Lord today. Lord, we love you. Thank you for bringing us back together. Thank you, God, for all your help, all your guidance, all your forgiveness. Thank you, Lord, for the touch of the Holy Ghost that we felt today in prayer, we felt today in class, and we even feel right now as we gather together to study your word and learn from your word. I pray, God, that you would bring revelation to pass. Bring it forth in our minds and our hearts so that we could better understand what you would have us to know and what you would have us to experience. And we'll give you the praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you again for being in class. It has been an absolute joy and a privilege to serve as your spiritual ministry instructor over this past school year. And I know we're getting so close to graduation, to the end of the year. And uh, what an exciting time. And I'm looking forward to being with you at graduation. And God is doing tremendous things in your life. Just don't have any fear uh, because God's got it all in control. I promise. So let's get into section number six. Our scriptural setting is going to, again, be in 1 Corinthians 12. And we'll get into reading that. And today we're going to talk about gift number eight, the gift of healing, or the gifts of healing. It is mentioned in the plural in the King James because uh, there are, uh, healing is not limited. Uh, there is the, the gift of healing that is available many times over. And uh, that's a very powerful and reassuring thing. So 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 1, our scripture setting is, and now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. And ignorant, as you know, means I wouldn't have you not knowing. So as Paul desired for us to know that we are to desire spiritual gifts, he also wanted to make sure that when you desired them, that you also understood them. Because uh, the application of spiritual ministry is very important. It's one thing to desire to be used by God, but it's another thing to know how to walk into the dimension of the Spirit where you can be used by God. It's the same way with getting the revelation uh, that Moses had when Moses was told by God, take the lamb, take it in the house, take the blood and eat the lamb. And they knew the exact thing they needed to do. However, simply knowing what to do isn't enough. You've got to apply. So that becomes the application of the revelation. You begin to apply the things that you have been told by God into the work and the service of God. And then they bring deliverance to the people. And that's very important because the gifts of the Spirit were not made to bring a, a glory and honor to ourselves. They were intended to bless the people, 
to encourage the people and bring glory and honor to the only one that deserves glory, and that's Jesus Christ. Many people, many times, will get so caught up in the gifts of the Spirit, and they'll begin to glory in what they consider their own power. The gifts of the Spirit are not manifesting our own power. The gifts of the Spirit manifest the power of God that dwells in us. And we submit to God, we obey Him, and He flows through us. But never is it us. Never is it our power. It is God's power. And so, even with the gifts of healing, it must be stated, first and foremost, as we get into this, that we are not healers. Uh, no one is going to, uh, should be coming driving distances to see us, the great healer, but they need to see Jesus, the great healer. It is Jesus that is the great physician. We're not the great physician. It's Jesus, and all the glory and all the honor belongs to him. So Paul is saying, I don't want you just to desire gifts, but I want you to know and understand them enough that you're comfortable being used by the Spirit in the gifts of the Spirit. And that's exactly what God is trying to do with the gift of healing. He's wanting to use us to do dynamic miracles for the kingdom of God, not for ourselves, but for the kingdom. I must decrease that he may increase. So continued in our scriptural setting, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and verse number 7, it says this, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, and to another faith by the same Spirit. And then verse 9 continues on and says, to another the gifts of healing. And we know that it is all by the same Spirit. And so as we get into our key verse, verse 9 of 1 Corinthians 12, to another faith by the same Spirit, and to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. We understand that this healing comes by the Spirit of God. That's very important for us to put down as the first and foremost reminder. This is of the Spirit. It's not man-made. It's not man-contrived. It's not man-conceived. It's not man-manipulated, but it is of the Spirit. This work of God is of the Spirit. Now, there are several of the gifts that we must make sure that we always remember and promote Jesus. Because when someone is used in prophecy, then they are looked at as so powerful. And it is powerful. But when people are, are used in the gift of healing, when you can speak to the blind and the blind see, when you can speak to the lame and the lame walk, when you can speak to the deaf and the deaf hear, when you can speak to those that have ailments and all of those sicknesses are removed and cancers are cured by the hand of God. It is very um, much common for sometimes those that are highly used to, to struggle with the, 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 the popularity of it because, oh, uh, that's the healer. I, I want you to know that we're not the healer. It is Jesus. Jesus is the one to be exalted. And no flesh shall glory in his presence. So we have to keep the right mindset as God uses us through all the gifts that we don't get exalted, but that we are used by the Spirit to exalt Jesus. And so as we get into the gift of healing, we are getting into the second gift listed under the gifts of power. And as I told you in our last session, the gifts of, of faith and the gifts of healing, they work in tandem so many times. And then obviously the working of miracles would flow into of the same nature. But there is a little bit of a difference and we'll get into that more as we progress through healing and then in our next session into the working of miracles. So today we're talking about the gift of healing. The gift of healing defined that we can define the gifts of healing as various forms, various forms of supernatural cure, various forms of supernatural cure or restoration from illness, disease, injuries, and other impairments. And as an introduction to the gift of healing, 
I want us to look at how this works in the broadest sense. When we are, are when we repent and when we're baptized in Jesus' name, when we experience the conversion of the new birth, there is a healing to our spirit. There is a, a, a move of God that spiritually restores us. So every man that is born again has gone through a spiritual restoration. However, this is not the same. When Paul is talking about the gift of healings, he is not talking about the restoration of the soul from the new birth, but he's literally talking about the miraculous. So healing can refer to physical, mental, and spiritual restoration. At the conversion experience, all Christians receive spiritual healing spiritual restoration, including the forgiveness of sins and reconciliation to God, and they receive a new spiritual life. However, in 1 Corinthians 12, Paul is speaking of a specific instances of healing that are given to certain individuals. This type of physical and mental healing are beyond that which is of a spiritual restoration that all Christians receive at the new birth. So we're not talking about a restoration or healing of the spirit when it comes to salvation. We are now talking about a dynamic healing that happens uh, to the mind and the body. There is a form of healing that comes with the new birth, and that's very powerful. We must never forget that. There is a healing and restoration that comes when we repent, when we're baptized in Jesus' name, and when we're filled with the Holy Ghost. But when it comes to the nine gifts of the Spirit, Paul is not referring to that type of healing. He is talking about a healing that can be of the mind and a healing that can be very physical, but it's not of a spiritual nature uh, when it comes to salvation. This is a restoration beyond that of salvation for the sinner because we know that salvation is for everyone. We know that salvation, it's not the will of God that any man should perish, but that all should come to repentance. However, we must understand healing happens at the timing and at the pleasure and the will of God. So everyone is called to repent. Everyone is called to spiritual restoration. Everyone is called to receive a spiritual restoration of the new birth. However, not everyone will receive healing. That is because sometimes sicknesses and impairments, they do the work of God. Sometimes it's Paul praying, Lord, take this thorn from my flesh. But we know after praying some three times that he finally, he says, Lord, uh, you know, I know your grace is sufficient. So Paul never received healing from the thorn that he struggled with in his body, in his mind, or in his spirit because we get the revelation later. Paul said, I know that the reason I did not receive my healing, my deliverance from this, is because I would get, my mind would be too uplifted with great revelations. I would, I would be overcome with the fact that I had all these great revelations. In other words, Paul is saying, if I did not have this thorn in my flesh, then I would be lost because I would boast in myself. And so God gave him a thorn that he was never healed of in order to keep him in the right place with God. So salvation intended for everyone, spiritual restoration from the law and death and the wages of sin intended for everyone. But this healing, this gift of healing, we do not all receive this gift of healing. We're not all used in the gift, and we do not all receive the healing at all times. Matter of fact, I told someone the other day, I, I, I was uh, talking with an elderly lady in the church and her husband that I was in revival at, and she come to me, and she's around 90 years old, and, and she come to me, and she said, I need healing in my body. And I, I told her, I said, we're going to pray for healing. But I also told her, we're going to pray for the will of God. Because I know at 90 years old, I hope that she lives until the coming of the Lord. 
But I know that all of us, in, unless the Lord comes back, all of us will at some point taste the sting of death until that is overcome in victory at the coming of the Lord. The dead in Christ shall rise first. Those that are alive and remain shall meet him in the clouds. That, the, in that moment, we will defeat death and we will have victory over it. So at some point, our bodies will succumb to something that we are not healed of. So healing is not for everyone. And it's very important to know that. And that's why that I always pray for the will of God to be done in someone's life. Salvation, spiritual restoration for everyone. Healing of the body, not always for everyone. That's why it's important to discern the things of God and discern when God is speaking so that we can experience and know when to speak healing into someone's life. So we know there's spiritual healing and spiritual restoration, and then there's mental, mental physical healing. Uh, and, and for the sake of, of just condensing it, when I say physical healing, I'm talking about of the mind and of the body. So spiritual healing comes with a, at the new birth for everyone. The gift of healing that happens in the uh, miracles of healing that happens in our body doesn't always happen for everyone at all times. So now that we understand the difference of that, let's flow into and talk about the two types of healing mentioned in the Bible. Two types of healing mentioned in the Bible. So there is a healing, healing is defined as we get, we can define the gifts of healing as various forms of the supernatural. It is a restoration from illness, disease, injuries, and impairments. And so with that in mind, the, the, the broadest sense of the term is that there is a physical healing that happens uh, when we are touched by the things of God. And we see that in two types in the Bible. The first type of healing in the Bible is a progressive healing, a progressive healing. And in my notes and parentheses, I just simply put this process over time and the healing process. And there are times that God will do a progressive healing. That is very biblical, matter of fact. And, uh, and, and I, I've known this, but then as I begin to study, to put this lesson together, the Lord really began to open my mind to some things. And there's biblical examples of people that experience progressive healing. Progressive healing, a healing that happens over time, is just as real, just as powerful as a, a healing that happens immediately, which is the second type of healing mentioned in the Bible. So let's unbox a little bit this first type of healing, this progressive healing. Some healings are gradual. Some healings just take time. Sometimes God may use an illness to accomplish a specific purpose in our lives or in the lives of other people. Most spiritual accounts of healing described in the Bible are instantaneous healings. However, there are very much notable cases that we can look at in the Bible that show that there is also a gradual or progressive healing. Healing that happens over time is very biblical also. God may sometimes simply remove whatever is preventing the body from healing itself and then let it resume its normal function. And certainly, we should expect such occurrences to happen. Nevertheless, even in the Bible, some healings were gradual. God may move and remove the thing that is causing the body. It is a miracle that God removes uh, whatever was causing the body uh, pain and anguish. But then the body begins to heal itself, begins to go through its natural processes of healing. But it's still a miracle because God removed the thing that was causing the trauma that then the body could begin to heal itself. So that is a progressive healing. And we can find an example of progressive healing in the Bible because Luke chapter 17, Luke 17 verse number 12, Luke 17 and 12 says it like this, and we're going to read through verse 14. And as he entered into a village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. So there were ten men that met him. They were all lepers. 
Verse 13 says, And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And verse 14 continues, And when, they, or when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourself unto the priest. And it came to pass. Now watch this. Watch verse 14. And it came to pass as they went, they were cleansed. There was a progressive healing that happened in the Bible. This is one of the greatest examples because they were not immediately healed. Jesus did not speak to them and say, uh, you're healed, be thou healed, go show yourself to the priest. No, he looked at them and said, go show yourself to the priest. And as they went, verse 14 in the King James, it says it. I'll read it to you because it's powerful. And when he saw them, he said unto them, go show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, as they went, they were cleansed. Literally, in the original language, you get the idea that, that when the Lord spoke to them, they still had leprosy. But as they got closer, as they traveled from Jesus, from the word of God, from the command of the Lord in obedience, go show yourself to the priest. As they got closer to the priest, it was progression. Then we get the idea from this text, even in the original language, that they began to become more cleansed, more healed, the closer they got to the high priest. That wasn't the power of the high priest. The high priest didn't have anything to do with this. This was them being obedient to the Lord. At any moment, they could have stopped and looked and said, Oh, I'm feeling some better, but I still have leprosy. I still have the open wounds of leprosy upon my body. But the Bible says, as they went, they were cleansed. It was progressive. It happened as they went. And there are times that we must know when we pray for someone, we can pray. Matter of fact, even um, in the Philippines, not uh, too many years ago, we prayed at, at, a, at the Acts Bible School Crusade several, uh, not too many years ago. We prayed for a man that had had a stroke. And uh, when we prayed for him, my son was there and others were there at the crusade. We were gathered around praying. The man had had a stroke. His face was drawn. His hands were done together. And, and he, could not, uh, he could not walk anymore because of the stroke. We prayed for him. And when we prayed for him, it, it, we felt God. We felt healing there. I, I claimed healing. I believed healing. I felt the Lord speak about healing, and he wanted healing, and God filled him with the Holy Ghost, and, and we rejoice over that. However, we did not see him walk. We did not see his arms straighten. We didn't see his face straighten from, and, and him be able to talk. We did not uh, see his legs straighten. We did not see him rise up and dance and, and rejoice. And, and we didn't see any of that. And so um, I, I, I had seen it before. I was preaching in another church in the Philippines around the same time. And, and a man come in and had to be carried up the steps. And we prayed for him. And, and we have it on video where God immediately healed him. His legs were bent together and they straightened. And he began to leap and rejoice. And, and the cane was thrown away that he was trying to stabilize himself with. And the stairs were so steep that he had had to be carried up. But God immediately healed him. That did not happen for the man that had the stroke at Acts Bible School at the crusade. And, and, and I, I wondered, Lord, you know, I, I, because when I feel like God's going to heal, I expect him to heal. And then when I don't see the healing, I think, Lord, I, you know, why didn't you heal him? But God was doing a healing progressive work in his body. Three or so days later, I preached a crusade uh, service for, I was not even supposed to be the guest speaker, uh, but another preacher coming from the U.S. could not make it, and and so uh, Sir Galimit asked me to preach for him, and I went to a crusade of churches together, and it, while we were there preaching and working the altars and praying with people, all of a sudden down the side of of the this this uh, a theater that had been rented out, here comes a man dancing with his hands raised and and worshiping God. And when he come to me, my son looked at me, and John said, "Dad, that's that's the man that we prayed with at." at the Bible school, and guess what? It was. The man just three or so days before 
he had we had prayed with him and he didn't look like he got healed he still looked his arms were still together his legs were still uh, bent together and his face drawn down uh, from the stroke but God started a work in that man's life filled him with the Holy Ghost spiritual restoration and then began a progressive healing it was powerful because between the few days three or four or so days uh, between when we prayed for him at the Bible school until I saw him again at another service during the week that, that Sir Galimit had, had planned with other churches, the man had been completely healed. That does not detract from God. God did that. Uh, God did the work with that. And so that's powerful to know. There will be times that you will be used in the gift of healing that you may not see them immediately get healed. Now, when I'm praying with people to be healed, I'm praying by faith and I'm expecting it to happen right now. However, I know, according to the word of God, as they went, they were cleansed. And the same thing can happen when we're praying with people. Same thing that happened with me. That man was healed over a span of a few days. That work that was started in him, the God that said, he who began a good work, will he's going to take care of it. And, and it grew and it progressed until the man was healed. And watch the same thing happen with Ella. And Ella is still on, a, uh, at the time of this recording, still on very strong medication, on multiple medications. I know of, of three different ones my, that she's on. And uh, very strong medicines for her kidney and uh, an antibiotic to try to keep her uh, the infections that colonized and mutated um, in her body that come from the Philippines and from America. They colonize together and she has been very, very, very sick. But over the last year and a half, we have watched something incredible happen. All of so many people praying, so many people around the world praying, and and uh, we've watched. And I can show you the pictures. the The kidney, her left kidney, uh, when it died, part of it died, not all of it, but part of it died, and it flattened out. I mean, it went completely. Um, and the only way that that I know, it looks a kidney kind of looks like. Well, and if you're in the medical field or formerly, you will know this, but it kind of looks like a bean. And, uh, you know, like, it kind of like this. But hers on one end, it was completely flat and dead on one end. Well, the kidney, according to one of the leading uh, kidney doctors in California, uh, the kidney is non-regenerative. It won't grow back. And so I asked the doctor, is her kidney always going to look like that? And they said, yes, her kidney is always going to look like that because it's non-regenerative. It won't grow back. But it still functions through three-fourths of it. So that was something to be thankful for. However, over the last year and a half, we have x-rays, ultrasounds, and I have pictures of them that have shown her kidney over the last year and a half has begun to grow back to its right shape. It started just a little bit, then it got a little bit more, and it got a little bit more, and it got a little bit more, and it got a little bit more. And now she has, at the end of April, she has a doctor's appointment where we expect to see it growing even more. Now, I would have loved for that to happen overnight. I would have, It would amaze me. Matter of fact, her doctors had no theory. They said the kidneys doesn't grow back. They're non-regenerative, but yet hers is. And I can say, as a matter of fact, the doctor said one time, she said, I don't know what it is. And she goes, but I know what you, I, I know what you think it is. I know what you know it is. How about that? And, and we just all laughed because she knows God's doing something she can't explain. That kidney is growing back, but it's taken a year and a half, but it is progressively getting better. That's why we believe that over the next few months, over the next however long, we don't know, we want it to be quicker, but God's going to do that to the point that she is completely back to normal and it will be an amazing testimony of the progressive healing of Jesus Christ. That's the gift of healing. That's how the gift of healing works. So just because you don't see it immediately does not mean that the gift of healing did not operate. Some things happen as they went. They were cleansed. And the second type of the gifts of healing is an immediate healing. And out to the side of that, I just put instant healing. Happens just like that. And so 
I want to give you some Bible examples of that, and that will be part of our uh, section where we talk about biblical examples of the gifts of healing. Uh, and, and I just want to read you some verses. Matthew 8 and 3, And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was clean. So we know that there is progressive healing, happens over time, and there is instant healing. Both of them are a part of the gift of healing. So you'll get this. Some people say, well, I don't believe in healing anymore. I don't believe in, in, in this immediate healing. Well, let's continue with Scripture and just say, what. let's wonder what the Scripture says. Matthew 8 and 3, we just read. Matthew 20 and 34 said, So Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes, and immediately their eyes received sight, and they followed him. And he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and immediately the fever, this is Mark 1 and 3, and he came by and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and immediately, did you catch that? The fever left her, and she ministered unto him. That was Peter's mother-in-law. And uh, that's just four verses. Let, let's read some more in case we need more proof about this immediate healing. Um, Mark 2 and 12, and immediately he arose. And took up the bed and went forth from them all, insomuch that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw it on this fashion. Uh, Mark 10, 52, And Jesus said unto them, Go uh, thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. Luke 1, 64, And his mouth was opened immediately, and his tongue loosed, and he spake and praised God. There, there, there's more. That's, that's not even close to all. Luke 8, 44, came behind him and touched the border of his garment, and immediately her issue of blood was staunched. And then verse 47 continues and said, And when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling and falling down before him and declared unto him before all the people for what cause she had touched him and how she was healed immediately gifts of healing. And Luke 13, 13, and he laid his hands on her and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. Luke 18, 43, and immediately he received his sight and followed him giving God, glorifying God and all the people when they saw it gave praise unto God. John 5, 9 said, and immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked, and on the same day was the Sabbath. Acts 3 and 7, And he took him by the hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. Acts 9, 34, And Peter said unto him, Jesus Christ maketh thee whole, arise and make thy bed. And he arose immediately. Isn't that powerful? So we have two examples of the gift of healing in action in the, in the New Testament church. And there's many examples of healing in the Old Testament. It flows into the New Testament and into the early church as we went through the Gospels and then into Acts into the early church. We have that progressive healing. We have that immediate healing, that gift of healings that come from God. Very powerful. Healing is for the church today. Healing for the mind. Healing for the body. I don't believe there's anything too hard for God. I have seen God do miraculous things. We just talked about a healing that occurred in our last session. We talked about the dead being raised. And so just in our getting ready in our closing remarks today on the gift of healing, I, I want to tell you about a, just a, a short story that happened to me at a, at a youth camp. And this is part of our section that we like to talk about the gifts in action. This is not to bring honor and glory to the teacher. It is to bring glory and honor to the king of kings. And so our gift of healing or our, our gifts in action section today, I want to tell you a story about a youth camp that I was at in the state of Louisiana. And that state is next to the place where I grew up, Mississippi. And I was at a, a youth camp. And while I was there, I saw this young lady in a wheelchair. And I had noticed, just because it was so obvious, that on one side of her, her body, her hip, uh, was swollen, really, really large, really deformed. 
and uh, in the wheelchair you could still see it and I'd gone up and I'd talked to her several times and uh, talked to her her mom when service would really get going and people were running and dancing she would want to be in the altar well uh, you know because her parents were scared that someone would bump into her in the altar they would r put her in the altar in the wheelchair and then when everybody would start running and dancing they would kind of pull her back just a little bit just to make sure that she didn't get hit well I found out that she had never she was somewhere around uh, 14 15 years old had never been able to walk and that that growth knot on her hip was massive and for some reason her hip never formed properly and also the bones in her ankle and foot never uh, healed properly or never grew properly and so uh, it wasn't a an accident that she was in she was born that way and had never been able to walk and the doctors wanted to amputate but her parents didn't want her to have it amputated and so they literally wired and done different techniques to keep the foot <clears throat> and bones together because they did not grow together and, and, and fuse together properly. And so she's in the altar, never been able to walk, wires in her foot and a hip that is, is so bad and swollen. And I had been, uh, she had been in the altar going back and forth and would have to be pulled back when everybody was dancing. I was in the prayer room and the Holy Ghost spoke to me and said, you go give her a word. And I said, Lord, I, who am I? And the Lord said, go give her a word and tell her, I want you to commend her for her worship. And I thought to myself, I said, God, um, you, you know, uh, what, what do you mean? And he goes, you go tell her that I see her worship and commend her for it and tell her that I receive her worship. So I was obedient. I went down and I asked permission from her mother. I reached down and talked to her. And I said, I was praying for you today. And the Lord, or I was in prayer today, and the Lord spoke to me to tell you that he sees your worship and to commend you for your worship. When I told her that, she began to weep. I mean, weep and cry. And her mother began to weep and cry. And I, I, I thought, you know, oh, oh, oh Lord. And, and, and she looked at me and she said, thank you for telling me that because I thought I was lost. Thought you were lost. You, you have the Holy Ghost. Yes. You're at church. You're at youth camp. Yes. Why would you be lost? And she said, because I can't obey the Bible. What do you mean you can't obey the Bible? She said, I can't obey the Bible because the Bible tells me in Psalms 150 to dance before the Lord. The Bible tells me to leap for joy. I can't dance. I can't leap. And the devil's been telling me that because I cannot obey the Bible, that I will be lost. My heart was broken. No wonder God wanted to commend her for her worship because he saw her worshiping from her heart with everything she had, her hands, her mouth, everything that could physically worship, she was worshiping. But the devil, because he's so evil, was telling her, oh, you can't dance. Oh, you can't leap for joy. You can't be saved. You can't obey the Bible. Well, you and I think, you know, we wouldn't believe that, but we're not in her situation. Bound to a wheelchair, never able to walk. Told her that, and she told me, she goes, I pray that God would give me one answered prayer. And I said, what's that? And she said, I want to dance one time before the Lord one time and she goes then I can sit back down on this wheelchair and I'll never complain I just want to dance before the Lord one time wow and I couldn't help but think about all the times that I was tired and didn't dance and here's somebody that just wants to do it with everything they've got we begin to pray God begin to move people were in the altar praying People started bumping into her wheelchair, and I'm there with her praying. And as they started to wheel her back, I looked and I said, no, let's don't do that yet. Is it okay if I, if I pray? The mother said yes, and I reached down and began to pray with this girl. And we began to pray. And, and, and that bold anointing that we talked about in our last session, come on me. Remember how this gift of faith and the gift of healing work together? That bold anointing got on me. And when that bold anointing got on me, I looked at her and I commanded her 
by the authority and by the power of the Holy Ghost to be healed. Commanded that hip to be healed, that leg to be healed, that ankle and foot to be completely made whole. And I tell you as real as I'm standing here talking right now, I look down and before our very eyes with her mother and others standing around and others that had gathered to pray, I watched the swelling in that hip completely go down like it dissolved away, completely went to normal. She looked down and saw it. Her mother looked down and saw it. And when everybody saw it, everybody started rejoicing and dancing. Everybody started. I mean, prayer went to the next level. It was like Holy Ghost plus 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 power i mean it was moving and i looked down and i took her by the hand and i told her in the name of jesus christ rise up and walk now i'm gonna tell you right now I, it's not me i don't have that kind of power i don't even have that kind of boldness but that gift of faith that bold faith revealed got on me to do the work of miracles and healing that gift of healing worked with that gift of faith or through that gift of faith all because of God and all because of her belief. And all of a sudden she took a good hold of my hand and I pulled her up. And when I pulled her up, she stood for the first time in her life, put weight on that leg and began to walk. Had never walked, but God taught her how to walk. Healed her, taught her how to walk. And the Holy Ghost came down and I watched that girl dance in the altar for over an hour, nonstop, healed before the Lord. Incredible. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Jesus' name. Jesus same yesterday today and forever some healings progressive they take time other healings are instant but both types are miraculous let's go to the Lord and ask him to help us I love you Jesus I feel you here Lord, I pray right now that you would open up the windows of heaven even more than they already are. Pour out your spirit upon every person watching right now. Let they, there be an anointing of boldness. Let there be healing virtue flow right now. God, help us to be able to recognize and discern when that boldness comes and that healing word comes. And God, help us to know that some things are progressive and some things are immediate, but all things are miraculous. We love you for it in Jesus' name. I feel the Holy Ghost right now, and I know time in our class and our session is running very short, but I want you to find a place just to lift your hands and lift your voice, if you can, as we get ready to close right now. Find a time, just a moment, a few moments. Don't be late for your next class. Don't be late for, for whatever you, you need to do, but let's lift our hands and thank God for his miraculous touch. Oh, he is worthy of our praise. He is the only one to receive the glory. God bless you. Look forward to seeing you in our next class where we will talk about the gift of miracles. God bless you. In Jesus' name.